Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Hallelujah. Oh, I love that. That's something, ain't it? The last song I heard when I left church here a week ago Wednesday night, the last song I heard was that song right there. And boy, that blessed me so good. I, 
Uh, I, I didn't even know really if I should have been at church on that Wednesday night. I had to leave work early that day. I was sick. And, uh, but I knew I wouldn't be able to be at, back at church till after we got back from vacation. So I come anyway. And, uh, and when the service was over and Sister Teresa sung that song, it blessed me so much. I couldn't hardly stand still. And uh, I didn't get to go to work that Thursday. And uh, but it's a wonderful name. Yes, it is. And and I'm going to read here in just a minute because I get, I got something I need to share with you out of Acts chapter sixteen. <laughs> But I thought about that man, I believe it's in Acts, the chapter 3, that was sitting at the gate called Beautiful. About the time that James and John went up at the hour of prayer to pray, and he sat there begging alms. And while uh, Kamaya was singing that song, I thought about him. And I thought about... Peter and John, when they went up, and as he begged for alms, Peter fastened his eyes on this man who was lame. And the Bible says that he told that man, said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the next thing you know, the Bible says he took him by the hand and he stood up on his feet and he began to leap and began to praise God. And I thought about if he was sitting this morning in this service when that song was being sung. What a powerful name it is. I just wonder what he might have done while he was sitting here this morning. You ever get a picture like that? Wonder what maybe he would have acted like or maybe what kind of emotion or commotion he might have caused in church this morning because he could tell you that there's power in the name of Jesus this morning. Amen. I'm glad that's something I not just heard about, but that's something that I've experienced. That's something I know firsthand. I love hearing your part about, that, about what Jesus has done for you. But I'm telling you this morning, I'm glad it's better felt than it is told. Amen. And I'm glad this morning to know there's still power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes I really wonder what we come for. I'm reminded of the little story, and I'm fixing to read, but the little story Brother George C. told about the revival he is in. And I've told this a lot of times, but I'm going to tell it again. About the revival he was in, and he preached all week and hardly got an amen out of anybody. Nobody come to the altar. And by the end of the week... People were just sitting still, not doing nothing. And he said, I told them this. He said, Jesus said, many are called and few are chosen. He said, but I say unto you, many of you are cold and a few of you are frozen. <laughs> Amen. And it's about the truth in our churches nowadays. Boy, I tell you, there's power in that name. I'm reading in Acts chapter 16. Starting in verse 1, going to read 15 verses quickly this morning. Got a little thought to share with you in Acts chapter 16, in verse number 1. What a beautiful, beautiful uh, chapter this is in the Bible. It says, Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman who was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek which was well reported of by the brethren which are at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews that were in those, those quarters, for they knew uh, all that his father was a Greek. 
And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. And when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after that they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Mysia, they came to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And there stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia, and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and and, we're, and we were that, and we in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and, and spake unto the women which resorted hither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized her and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Now, that's all I want to read this morning. It's those 15 verses. And uh, this morning I want to use quickly uh, for a thought this morning. Uh, if the Lord will be my helper and give me uh, His unction and His anointing for just a few minutes this morning, I want to preach on the thought, open for business. Amen. Open for business. Maybe I can get my collar open too here. Amen. All right. Open for business. Now, Acts chapter 16 is one of those chapters in the Bible that's got a lot of recognition. It's been preached out of many times down through the years. One of the messages in this chapter, of course, is about the Philippian jailer. And when Paul was put into prison and at midnight, he sang and, and, and they prayed him and Silas. And uh, you probably heard a lot of messages from that scripture in this chapter in the book of Acts. But there's something in this chapter to me that really has always caught my attention. And it was this lady in the Bible, this sister, whose name is Lydia. Now, there's something else, and I want to just get to it as God been my helper this morning. There's something else I, I noticed in this chapter, amen, about uh, uh, something that was very substantial to Paul's life. He met Timothy in this chapter. It's where his, his best friend, I guess you might say, uh, that he probably had in life, uh, came into his life. Amen. In verse 1, it tells us that he met this uh, young man called Timotheus. And so Timothy, whose mother was a Jew and daddy was a Greek, amen, came into Paul's life. And so you see where Paul, uh, because the Jews in that day, amen, uh, uh, was still uh, 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 sort of headlong as they are today when it comes to the law of Moses, amen, they, uh, Paul, for that reason, had Timothy circumcised, amen, and then I took with him on his journey as he went around preaching. Now there's something here, amen, that really catches my attention. Paul being one of the closest men to God that I've ever read about in the Bible, amen, had a plan. His plan was, was to go down, uh, amen, into uh, different places. Well, I read to you there where his plan was to go down. Uh, the Bible says 
here uh, to Phrygia and throughout Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost uh, to preach in that land. Now look, they had a plan, amen. They had an ideal. They had something they intended on doing, but God forbid them. The Holy Ghost said, no, that ain't what I want you to do. That ain't where I want you to go. And so they, amen, they come up with another plan. And then on the next plan, the Bible says that the Spirit of God I forbid them, amen. I, the Spirit of God I kept them from going I, down to the next place. And so they got uh, where they really just didn't know what direction to go in. And Paul had this vision, amen, this vision of a man in Macedonia uh, saying, come over and help us. Now, I don't know if, if Paul really ever met that man. Uh, the Bible, I don't reckon I, I have ever found where Paul really met that man he saw in this vision. Uh, but God let him see a man, uh, amen, that said, come over and help us and they were assured by the Holy Spirit when he saw that vision that they needed to go and to preach in that place and the Bible says they went to Philippi and there, uh, there they went and they stayed there a few days amen who knows what they done while they were there uh, but they knew they was in the right place you know we gotta wait on the Lord we gotta be patient amen we gotta wait on God's time and amen I don't believe Paul went there began to preach. I don't want to believe Paul went there and began to tell everybody maybe even who they were. Uh, but he went there waiting on the Lord. Amen. To open the door. Amen. And the Bible says uh, on the Sabbath day there were certain women. Amen. Listen. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of people. Amen. That says that. Amen. That religion and that, that, that Christianity. Amen. Is, is a religion that depresses women. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something this morning, friend. Uh, that's the farthest thing from the truth. Amen. There's a lot of things in the Bible, amen, that the Bible speaks about. Amen. When it comes to a woman, amen, as a matter of fact, amen, look, who was the first one that Jesus appeared to when he rose from the dead? Who was the first one uh, that he spoke to? It was Murray Magdalene. And he gave Murray a message how to go tell his disciples and let me tell you something, friend. Everybody in God's house has an important place. Amen. And there's nobody's place more important than anybody else's. Amen. amen. This woman named Lydia, the Bible says that she was a worshiper of God. Now, I, I, I think about Lydia. I think about she, she worshiped God the best she knew how. What she knew, she sort of reminds me of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. She, saw, uh, she reminds me of, uh, of the eunuch, a man that, uh, that was in the desert. And he was reading Isaiah chapter 53. He was doing the best he knew how to do. I'm telling you this morning, friends, I, I, man, there's, I'm glad that God knows our heart. God knows deep down inside. He knows all about us. I'm glad I don't have to explain to him, amen, how I feel. I don't have to tell him, amen, what I need. I'm glad he knows me, amen, inside out this morning. And look, Lydia, I was doing the best she could, amen, and God sent Paul to that place uh, to hear a message how to preach a message so Lydia's heart uh, could be open this morning. Amen. Look, I want to preach on that uh, just for a few minutes. Amen. Uh, I read in the Bible, amen, where Jesus opened up uh, the ears of those that couldn't hear. Amen. I, I, I read in the Bible where Jesus opened up uh, the eyes of those that were blind. Amen. I read in the Bible where Jesus opened up uh, the mouth of those that couldn't speak, amen. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, friend, uh, no matter what Jesus...
Jesus ever did when it comes to miracles of the greatest thing in life, amen, that ever happens to anybody is when the Lord opens your heart up for business, amen. I mean, friend, listen this morning. Lydia done the best she can, uh, but listen, she heard about Jesus. How she heard about the blood. How she heard about the death. How she heard about the resurrection. And as she listened, God opened her heart, my friends. Amen. I've heard people's testimony. And I love it. Because everybody wasn't saved on their knees. Just because you was on your knees when you got saved don't mean everybody has to be on their knees to get saved. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll never forget a lady that I went to church with 30 years ago. And she was seeking the Lord. But she, had, she just didn't have the understanding. She just didn't really know. And she, and she had heard the message and heard the word. And she had, had been, as a child, been baptized. And she had been to church and grew up in church. But something was missing inside. Listen, friend, unless God opens your heart, there's something missing down inside this morning. And this lady was missing something and she knew it. She had come to church. Amen. And she had, she had sang in the choir and she had prayed around the altar. But something was missing. Let me tell you something. When God opens your heart up, when God comes into your life, when God is the one, look, you can say, look, I open my heart to Jesus. I'm the the truth of the matter is, uh, none of us have enough strength uh, to open our hearts up to the Lord uh, because of the sin that's got us locked down. Uh, we're captive uh, because of sin. We have no power over sin unless it was for grace, unless it was for the Spirit, unless it was for the call of God. None of us, amen, would ever know what it means to have our hearts open to the Lord this morning, my friends. I remember this lady come to church. And she come in one morning and she was glowing like a light bulb. And she said, her name was Brenda. She said, Brother Joy, I've got something I've got to tell you. Now I hear about people talking about these near-death experiences. Near death, they were maybe in ICU or CCU or in an accident or something and had a near death experience, out of body experience. She said when she went to sleep, she said she started dreaming. And she said she started seeing a vision, maybe sort of like Paul seen, except hers was a little different. She said she seen a light that was shining and it got brighter and brighter and brighter. And then she heard a voice, and she said, the next thing you know, it was, it was getting a hold of her so much, she, she woke up, and when she was waking up, she was crying, Lord, save me, Lord, save me, Lord, save me. And she said when she was crying that, hey amen, she realized that she wasn't lost anymore. I'm here to tell you, God can deal with you right when you're dead asleep, amen. I want you to know something, friend. I, that man called Lazarus, I, Jesus had been gone for, amen, man for four days he'd been in the grave he was as dead as dead could get he was laying there wasn't moving anybody else could have called out Lazarus and it wasn't made a hill of beans different oh, but because Jesus I cried out and said Lazarus come forth listen he wasn't he couldn't open up he couldn't get up but when Jesus said Lazarus come forth there's power in his name my friends you remember when God called you from the dead? Do you remember that? Because you was like me and like everybody else. We were all dead in our sins and trespasses. 
Lydia was a good woman. She was a working woman. She was known for what she done. She was known for who she was. But she had something missing, and only Jesus I could open up her heart for business this morning, friend. I remember. I don't know how long it was before I got saved, but I remember one Saturday morning it was, or maybe it might have even been Sunday, but I remember waking up one morning, and I remember making a decision. Oh, I was about 13 years old or so, and it started bothering me that I knew if I died, I was going to hell. So I woke up once, and I was laying in bed, and I kept thinking, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to do that. So I got up, and I got down on my knees beside my bed. And I said, God, I don't want to go to hell. God, I want you to save me. I said, God, I want to, I want to go to heaven. But you know what? It was I, I, I. It wasn't God dealing with me. There was a time and a season for everything under heaven, my friend. Listen, you don't put God on your calendar, on your schedule. God is the one that makes the schedule, and God is the one that chooses uh, to call you when he pleases, my friend. That's why the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. You know why it says there's few chosen? Because people want to go to God on their schedule instead of coming to God on his schedule. Amen. Listen, Paul and Timothy and the others had, had Asia on their schedule. They had other places on their schedule. And God said, no, you're not. Listen, they had a good plan, but their plan wasn't from God. Amen. I want you to know something this morning. There's a lot of good planning goes on in the Baptist church. Amen. In our modern day. How about we can plan whatever we want? That don't mean God's in it. If God ain't given the plan, God ain't in the mess, my friends. Amen. I love it when our plan gets messed up. Amen. So I, that didn't work. That didn't work. So about a month or two later, I woke up one morning and I said, okay. I said, I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to quit all these sinful things that I knew I was doing. And I said, I'm going to be a better person. And I'm going to show God that I can, I can be good enough to go to heaven. And you know what? I got up and went on my day. And I'd done okay first two or three days. But after about a week, I was the same person I was when I had changed my mind about myself. I was still the same old sinner. And I even got to a point in my life, I remember telling a boy I went to school with, one of my best friends, we was in the library, and I ain't never forgot this because God got my attention. Somehow or another, we was talking about religion, we was talking about God, and I told him, I said, I guess a church will never be a, a place I'll ever be part of. And when I said that, that scared me. Something about that got a hold of my heart. Something about me saying that put a fear in me. And I didn't know it would, but I said, I don't guess I'll ever be part of the church. Amen. I, but let me tell you something. God had a different plan, did he? I, God had a different way. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I remember that night. Amen. When I was like Lydia. Now let me tell you something, friend. I can get happy over somebody's eyes being open. I can get happy over somebody ears being open. I can get happy over somebody's mouth being loose. I'm a glory to God this morning. I'm the happiest I ever been is when the Lord opened my heart up and he opened it up for business. Amen. You remember Jesus when he was 12 years old 
You remember that? And they had been down to Jerusalem. I believe it was for the feast of the Passover. But anyway, all the family is heading back to Nazareth. And they'd been gone about three days, and they started looking around. Somebody was missing. Now, that's the way we are a lot of times. Jesus can be gone. It takes us three days to even figure out that Jesus ain't here. Amen? Yeah. He was missing. <laughs> the, the main, Lord, have mercy. Can you imagine Mary and Joseph, God entrusting them with his son? And uh, they was just having a good time in those days, no doubt. Those days, no doubt, there was people that their families mingled together and, 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 and stayed together and they was just, amen, part of each other and part of each other's family. Everybody knew where everybody else's kids was, but on the third day, they said, hey, where's Jesus at? Amen. Where's Je <laughs> Amen. And they found out something was missing. I'm here to tell you this morning, friend, there's a lot of us that's traveling through life and the, and the most difficult important thing. Amen. Is the one that's the most important in life whose name is Jesus. Listen this morning. They couldn't find him, but guess what? They went right back where they come from. Yeah. And guess where they went? They went down to the Father's house. Yeah. They went down to the temple. And there sat Jesus out there, 12 years old. And Murray, I, I'm not, I might not say this word for it, but Murray said, Son, Thy father and I have sought thee these three days. Why troublest thou this way? Why, why, why you, why, why'd you leave us? And Jesus simply looked up and said, said, Mama, woman, knowest thou not I must be about my father's business. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that Mary heard what Jesus said and pondered these things in her heart. You know, oh, oh, glory to God. You know, their hearts wouldn't open to what Jesus had to say until on that, on that third and appointed morning when Jesus, God, I wonder about, you read time after time after time, where Murray, the Bible says, and Murray pondered these things in her heart. I wonder time after time after time, amen, when Murray, uh, the mother of Jesus, amen, wondered really what Jesus, uh, why he had really come, why, what was the reason of his life, what was the purpose going to be for his life when he hung between heaven and earth and he gave up the ghost. Don't you know her heart was troubled, her soul was troubled, and she pondered under these things. Amen. But listen, on that third and appointed day, how the tomb was open for business, Bobby. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, friend. Amen. God is still rolling of the stone away this morning, friend. Why? Why do you think God opened your heart? You know, you know, I thought about this. I thought about why is it we love our mamas and our daddies? Why, why do you just love your mom? It's a natural thing to love your mom and daddy. It is. You love your mama and you love your daddy. That's the way God made us. That's why the Bible tells us to honor our mother and our father. Because God instilled that in us. It's natural for, love, for us to love the one that begot us, the one that we came from. We should love them. I love my mama. My mama is sick, and I want you to pray for her. She's not doing well at all. And I love my mama, and I love my daddy. I still love him. I love my children just like you do. You just love them. You know why you love your parents, you love your children, you love your siblings? Because God put a place in your heart that you could love those people in your life. I always wondered why these people run around with these 
license plates on their vehicles that says, let me tell you about my grandchildren. Anybody here ever wondered that like me? I wonder. I thought, why in the world have they got that license plate on their vehicle? Let me tell you about my grandchildren. I thought, my goodness, why do they have that on there? And then I found this out. Eleven years ago, this July the 20th, there was a little girl born over there in... in to Nova Hospital at Turkey Creek. And I was standing on the side of a curtain. Sharon was on the other side with Chastity and Josh. Bless him, Lord. And I heard a cry for the first time in my life. Yeah. And there was a place in my heart I didn't know I had it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know it was there. But God, God had made a place in my heart that I didn't even know was there. And when I heard that cry, you know what? I didn't see her for a little bit because they was, they was going to clean her up and get her, wrap her up. They was, they, I heard that cry. And I wanted so bad to reach over and grab that baby and hold it in my arms. I'd never seen her before in my life, but oh, I loved her, Harold, I loved her. I loved her, I, I loved her, oh, I wanted to hold her. And finally, they, they said, well, we, we almost got her ready. Joy, what my said, I'm bringing her in just a minute, give us a minute. And they carried that little sweetheart around, and there she was, Bobby, and I was holding her. And oh, I found out there's a place in my heart that I didn't know was there until I met that little grandchild. Let me tell you something, friends. How God has put a place in your heart, amen, for the people in your life, but there's nobody in your life that can fill that place that only Jesus can this morning. Amen. Lydia was religious, but it, didn't, it wasn't good enough because when she heard the gospel preached, the Lord opened up her heart. And when the Lord opened up her heart, the Bible says that she received the message and was baptized. She was baptized and she wanted the disciples to go home with her. Now, I don't know about you, but some people come to church and leave church here when they leave and go back home. But I found out the night the Lord opened up my heart and made me part of his family and opened my heart up for business. Amen, like Jesus told his mom and dad. Amen, I found out that I didn't bring the church. Amen, I didn't bring the Lord to church to me. With me, the Lord brought me to church with him. And I found out that when I left the worship service, he didn't stay at the church. He went home with me. I'm here to tell you this morning, friend, there's a place in your heart that God wants to open up and only he can this morning, friend. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Now, a lot of Baptists ain't going to like me for saying this, but I'm going to tell you right now, it would hardly shock me for most people in the Baptist church that I know a lot of people if they come up to me and say, Joey, I thought I was saved and I got saved today, that would not shock me. Because I'm telling you right now, those people, that church ain't nothing more than a social event. Church ain't nothing more than a gathering place to shake hands with somebody. Church ain't nothing more but a place where they get their conscience, amen, see, uh, cleared every once in a while. Church ain't nothing more to them, amen, than just somewhere to go so the preacher will leave them alone. Hey, but I'm telling you right now, amen, when they start singing about my Savior, when they start singing about his power, when they start singing about his grace, when they start singing about heaven, when they start are singing about how good God's been to me. It's more than just a place. It's the presence of the Lord uh, that opens my heart up for business. Amen. Amen. That's right. I 
I've prayed for deacons to get saved. Amen. I've run into some deacons, boy. And I said, Lord, if they're saved, bless them. But if they ain't, save them. Just because of the way they live and act. I've run into preachers that I've done the same way. I've run into Sunday school teachers. I'm telling you right now, friend, God's not on your schedule. God ain't on your calendar. You, are your, is your heart open for business that me and you can find ourselves on the schedule that God has for us this morning, friends? I found myself that night. I was praying. There's preachers gathered all around me. And I found myself... I couldn't open up my heart to God. It don't matter what I said or what I prayed or who prayed around me. They was laying hands on me. They was crying. They was raising their hands. They was praying in the name of Jesus. It wasn't doing me a bit of good. But I found myself in a place by myself on the altar. And it, was a, it wasn't an altar of wood. It was a place like just over here on the side. And I found myself crying out to God, can you save somebody like me? And you know what? I didn't have the power to open up my heart to God. But because of who He is, and because of he, who, the power that's in His name, and because of the work that He done on the cross, and because when He said it is finished, when I called on His name, He opened up my heart, and He just didn't open up my heart. He opened it up for business, my friends. God didn't save me just to go to heaven. God didn't save you to be a whatnot on the shelf till it was time for you to get off the shelf and go to heaven. God opened up my heart for business. He opened up my heart so I could pray. We ought to be a praying people. He opened up my heart. He gave me a song. I tell you what, when I visited Winnie this morning, she said, Joy, she said, I was, I was a, a singing about the blood of Jesus. I was singing about the power of Jesus. She was just weeping and crying. Amen. She's got oxygen on. She's had pneumonia. But I'm telling you, when your heart's open for business, God can visit you in the hospital. God can visit you in the nursing home. God can visit you, amen, at the graveside. Amen. Listen, my friend, I don't know about you, but I've seen God get in the graveyard and cause people to shout, Amen. You say, preacher, that kind of religion, what in the world are you talking about? What do you think happened when Lazarus did? Yeah. When, they, when they rolled that stone, he said, roll the stone away. I'm glad for, a, I'm glad for an open tomb, ain't you? Amen. Lord, I'm glad. Easter's two weeks away. I'm glad for a tomb that was opened. But what's an open tomb if your heart ain't open for God this morning? It ain't going to do you a bit of good. Simply Jesus dying on the cross is not going to save you from your sin. You've got to have your heart open. It's got to be open for business. And that's God's business this morning. <clears throat> While we were on vacation, and I'm, I'm closing with this. While we were on vacation, me and Josh went and played around the golf. And there was a man there from Nebraska that asked us if he could play golf with us. And I said, yes, sir, you sure can. And when Josh got me by himself, he said, Daddy, why'd you let him tell him he could play golf with us? I said, well, I don't care for him playing. Why? He said, he talks too much, Daddy. <laughs> he was in the clubhouse. He was paying, and that man was in there evidently. And he heard him talk. He wouldn't ever stop talking. <clears throat> we played golf with him for 18 holes. And on the 18th hole, I walked up to him and I said, Delmer, I said, I just want you to know something. I said, you played golf with two Baptist preachers today. 
He said, oh, my Lord, I'm glad I didn't swear. <laughs> he said, I'm a Catholic. And he said, I'm glad I didn't swear. And I said, Delmer, I got saved when I was 15 years old. And that's the only thing that's going to get you to heaven, is getting saved. Now, I don't know if that'll ever mean anything to him or not. I don't know if that'll ever. But you know what? God was opening my heart for a business for a long time before I ever knew he was opening it like Lydia. He was getting Lydia ready. I don't know what's been going on in your life, but I know this. God's been getting you ready to open your heart for business this morning. But you got to come on his terms. You got to come his way. You got to come his time. I want to ask you this morning. We're going to stand. We're going to sing. Is your heart open for business? Oh, Is it just Jesus, You need to come this morning. Be like Lydia. Why is it we've got our hearts open for seems like everything under heaven? We need to have our hearts open for God this morning. Seems like we've opened our hearts up to so many things in this world. We've crowded God from out of our lives. Is your heart open this morning? I'm going to ask somebody this morning. Take that step of faith and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you this morning. I'm, going to, I'm giving it all. Lord, I'm not holding anything back. Lord, I want my heart to be opened up for your business. I want to, Lord, for my heart to be opened up like you opened up Lydia's heart. I wonder who this morning will step out and say, yes, Lord, let it be me this morning. Come on, would you? Right now, would you just step out and say yes, Lord? You've got up, you got ready, you've come this far, why don't you come the rest of the way? Why don't you do it right now? Oh, I surrender all to Jesus. I want to give it all to God. I want God to open up my heart. Bishop, sister, what is it you need to pray about this morning? What you asked Jesus to do for you this morning, Haley. I asked him to help me and to save me. Amen. Amen.
Did you accept him as your Savior today? Yes, I did. Do you believe with all your heart he saved you? Yes, I did. Hallelujah to God! <laughs> Hallelujah! Come on down here, shake your hand. Anybody wants to? Come on. Yeah, you got a new sister this morning. <laughs> Haley Bozeman is her name. Ain't God good this morning? Oh, there's, there's power in his name this morning. There's power in I couldn't wait to get back from vacation. I, I hardly ever, I just want to stay when I go on vacation. But I'm so ready to come back from vacation. And God knows. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. God knew why. God knew why I was ready to come. I told you God gave me this message two weeks ago. Do you remember me telling you? God said, I want you to preach this after vacation. He don't do me that well all the time, but he does. He said, I want you to preach this when you get back. Hallelujah to God this morning. Friend, is your heart open for business? Have you, have you let God open up your heart? Listen, it ain't nothing that you can do to save you. There's no power that you got that can help you. There's no power that you got that can redeem you. You can't save yourself. You've got to trust Jesus. You've got to trust Jesus this morning. What about it? There's others I believe with all my heart in this church house this morning that need your heart open. And you need it open to the Father's business. Why is it that we're taking back from God what we once gave Him? What we once gave him. We want to we want to deal with God and make a deal with God. We want to tell God this is the way we intend for it to be. Yes, 